in the climate arena, a lot of scientists are baffled by, and it touches very much on what you were saying, it's not so much the lack of trust in, in certain models and certain evidence, but we all receive weekly emails from people who ask, which I would often say on the surface are quite reasonable questions, which have reasonable answers. But the second part of the email invariably contains an enthusiastic embrace <laughs> of an alternative theory from which there's no evidence whatsoever. So in other words, it's a lack of trust in what one would have thought was trustworthy, accompanied by an enthusiasm for something that's completely untrustworthy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of scientists, and it's the same for the anti-vaxxers, we really, we really struggle with sort of understanding no. No. How, how to tackle that without coming across as authoritarian or even suppressing information. I'm, the only way I can think of dealing with it is that of, uh, as it, which is time consuming and we can't do it across the board, uh, engagement. So tell me how this was established, show me how this was established. So listen to their uh, alternative view of uh, reality or their alternative theory and uh, point out where their evidence fails. Now, I think that's unfortunately a council of perfection. We none of us have the time to do that. And if a theory is sufficiently insulated, or as a belief system, let's call it, sufficiently insulated, actually one can get nowhere doing it. And that, to my mind, is very difficult. But I think there is a fascinating change going on at the moment, uh, if I can describe it. I'm going to do a little detour just to, because your question is absolutely spot on to what matters. Um, I think this business about uh, the uh, intermediaries in communication is too neglected at present and people uh, don't think it matters. When I look at when there have previously been crises in the ethics of communication, it has been to do with the intermediaries, not with the medium. So when you read Plato's account of why Socrates didn't write, which is one of the classical contexts, uh, at first you think, well, there's something about writing. And it isn't about writing. What uh, the, the words that Plato quotes Socrates are saying is, I would not have my words go fatherless into the world with nobody to look after them, to uh, uh, intervene when they are misunderstood and misinterpreted. And of course, if you think of the world of writing, where there's an inscription up somewhere and nobody knows who the hell put it up or uh, what it's about, uh, then you can imagine that that looks like a difficulty where Socrates did face to face. Uh, but then when you look at the early modern period with pr the printing revolution, we get a total disruption of standards of uh, communication because people can't tell how the stuff is circulating. And if you read some of the accounts of what happened in the period before there was a distinction between printing and publishing, and when publishers were uh, without liability for de defamation, one can see that it took a great deal of careful and complicated legislation. Now, how to deal with this now is, I think, the difficult thing because immediately one says, well, online it, it, it's jurisdictional and there's no global jurisdiction, so you can't do it by legislation. Um, I read the minutes of a meeting in Palo Alto recently with some of the leading players in this world. I would say that uh, one of the things that is happening is that the uh, internet service providers and the social media companies are correctly getting extremely worried. Now, of course, they want to prevent legislation, but they don't think that it's a question of nothing. And this is the revolution we're on the cusp of, in my view.